In 2019, my husband Larry spent four months creating the most incredible Halloween costume. So I've made a video about it. Larry made a life-size replica of Robbie the Robot. Robbie the Robot, I'm sure you've seen him. He first appeared in the 1956 film Forbidden Planet. He was also featured in another film, The Invisible Boy. But he has also appeared in a lot of other TV shows and films, including The Addams Family, The Twilight Zone, uh, Columbo, uh, and even most recently, The Big Bang Theory. So he will probably look familiar to you. This video is 30 minutes long, and the beginning part shows Larry in his his costume, and it shows him assembling it. It, it follows us. We went to the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History last year, and Robbie was a special guest. Um, and then toward the end of the video, I have included some of the more technical aspects because I know some of you watching this might want to make a Robbie of your own, or maybe you're simply interested. You're a maker like Larry. I don't make physical things quite as much as he does, but he has had a lifetime of making things, with, and that's what he brought to this project. So even though this was his first time doing a CAD project or doing 3D printing, he was able to create something quite wonderful because he is a, a master carpenter and he's spent his life taking things apart and putting them together. Anyway, enjoy this video and happy Halloween. Hi, my name's Larry Snyder and uh, I'm semi-retired, but uh, to keep myself out of trouble, I, start, I do projects. I wanted this year to make a Robbie the Robot. This is my Robbie Robot outfit. And uh, I'll make a little video here and show you some of his features and tell you that he's not that hard to make. Anybody could do it now. It's, it's pretty straightforward and easy. And uh, happy creating. Boy, am I gonna need practice in this outfit. Wow. Oh my God, Larry, this is incredible. I have no idea if there's anything in front of me, I'm taking a step. Yeah, you better not. Huh? You better not. I I don't want you to fall over. Yeah, it's going to be so cool when those uh, light up panels and everything are installed. Welcome to Altair 4, gentlemen. Is there anything I can help you with? Is there anything? <laughs> I can help you with. <laughs> I've analyzed your needs and can synthesize the materials you requested. <laughs> Something is approaching from the southwest. <laughs> So uh, if I want to analyze, this is cool, you can like, like this, it's got piano keys. I mimicked all of Robbie's original widgets, okay? So these are called his piano keys, and this is his chemical analyzer panel. Wow. And, and I can change the colors too, just rudimentary now. If I program a, a microcomputer, I can have it do a lot of color changing, but for now it's just, I just have a switch for color changing. Is the voice turned on? No, I'll turn it on in a minute. Oh. I'm going to demo one thing at a time. Oh, listen to you. I'm just I'm getting this from Facebook. Wash, yeah, yeah, let me because see. Because it goes through some kind of synthesizer to make it sound weird? Or? No, just the echo. Okay. But I'll, I'll show you the voice in a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll show you the voice. Mm -hmm. I can't go analyze it for a long time. Okay, so on the top, he's got sax valves. Um, <laughs> these are his sax valves. Now, I, I got it so that it changes color when the sax valves operate, just to draw your attention up there when, you know, when they, when they go. Hmm. 
And keeping all the stuff kind of quiet is important too because I have to talk over it. Originally, Robbie was so noisy, he had to be dubbed in. The actors that were standing next to him, he had to record the voice later because Robbie was a clangy, oh. he sounded like an old mechanical calculator. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so mine, I'll turn on my voice. So the original Robbie the Robot had uh, neon tubes here. And neon, uh, I'm sorry, uh, neon requires 20,000 volts right in front of your face. And I didn't really want that. When I'm in there, I'll, I'm still working on this stuff, honestly. Testing. There you go. They, the light should go with my voice. I gotta turn everything down because uh, his mechanisms are making it. Are triggering his voice. <laughs> <laughs> It, but you know, you have. Where's that paper towel? But you have way more external fans. All of us yeah. here. Yeah. There you I go. I got five pounds. Robbie weighed 125. And the guy that was in him Oof. was five foot four. He carried that around, but his scenes were very short, two or three minute scenes, and he Yay. would back himself into an articulated cradle that would hold up the suit while he was in it. Uh. Wow. Robbie was really a team of four guys. One was in the suit, two helped him in and out of it, and one guy just made his control panel work all the widgets. My Robbie is totally self-contained and I work all the widgets from inside and that's why this switches on my fingers and uh, and the microphone right over here. So I that's why you sound like you're yeah. Right, and of course Robbie didn't have a voice. He was dubbed in later. As a matter of fact, not only Robbie, but the actors that were right next to him, they were dubbed in later too. He was so noisy, he sounded like a clanky old editing oh. machine, yeah. that they couldn't act over it. They went, they went through the scene, and then they would dub in the voices later yeah. when they... Yeah, they didn't have stepper motors No, 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 Robbie's old. Now, now Robbie is uh, up there. I think we need spaghetti. Okay, so let's see. At this point, uh, Robbie's torso is... We're taking Robbie to the museum. This is one of Robbie's, I call them ears. He's got lights for his eyes, he's got rotating, uh, I don't know what they are, sensors so he doesn't bump into things or something like that. 
One goes sideways. One is a vertical sensor. There they are. Now, Ver uh, Robbie's ears on my robot. They're one with Velcro. <laughs> Inside, I've got a little uh, DC motor. And this, uh, this powers Robbie's ears. Yeah. Easy to assemble. I just uh, Velcro them back together when I'm ready to rock and roll, roll with Robbie. I love the effect of those ears. They, they really bring that move out to life. These are Robbie's rotating gyros, and he's got a stationary, I don't know, I call it a power on light. <laughs> now, in the original Robbie, uh, I bet some of this was uh, aluminum and brass uh, machine inks, and I could have done that too, but gosh, Robbie weighs enough. I think the original robot weighed over 100 pounds. They, I've read 125 pounds. I'm not really sure about that, but. My robot comes in at about 45, and believe me, that is heavy enough. So everything, practically, in my Robbie, except for very few parts, are plastic. I 3D printed the globe, 3D printed the aluminum-looking widget under it, and the brass uh, rotating part, and the gears, and all that stuff, all 3D printed. And even the gyroscopes, all 3D printed. You know, surprisingly, one of the challenges to all Robbie's mechanisms is making them quiet. I wanted to make them light and quiet so that uh, Robbie is not that noisy a robot. Uh, these are the actual guts to my Robbie's head. Um, the sax valves right here, these, uh, these just flip a little bit and they're driven from a little transmission I have in his head. And the uh, gyros, they run around there. Each one are geared. You can't spin them independently because they kind of interact. They run around the center light here. Uh, and their, their bearing is this rotatable hub right here. My Robbie's front panel is not flat. Uh, you can see a slight curve at the top. And uh, there's a bigger curve down there. And it's because, of course, my head is in this suit. And I wanted to give myself a little headroom. This is the inside of uh, Robbie's head. The, uh, the first box you see at the top, that one there, that's the transmission to run the gyros. And that transmission is above the transmission that runs the sax valves. And they, uh, there's very long push rods from this transmission, which is at the back of my head, to go all the way forward. And run those push rods. The rest is just uh, uh, slits between the sax valve so I can see. Those are viewing ports. <laughs> and uh, LEDs. Uh, each one of these things is multicolor LED and the wiring for those and some LEDs uh, associated with the late, uh, lucite piping tubing at the bottom. Uh, those things light up too. And of course the wiring harness uh, has uh, wiring harness to connect it to you know the electronics in the lower end. Well it looks like a lot of people are working on uh, Robbie's ears with the gyro motors etc. Here's my ear. Let's see if we can't. Show you. I, uh, there's his, uh, I don't know, light reflector cones. I didn't make mine out of metal. I, I, Robbie, for me, is a wearable suit, so I wanted to make everything as light as possible. That little motor inside is the same motor I use to drive all of Robbie's mechanisms. They're about $2, <laughs> and uh, they're easy to, easy to change out. and made a little slot where they all slide into a little pocket and they come in and out pretty easy. The uh, behind the, you know, the ears only on with Velcro 
and it stands off his head about an eighth of an inch so air can get behind it. And if you look up here, uh, that's where his wiring comes in and of course it lets air into the suit. I had a big problem originally with uh, Robbie steaming up so I let air into the suit here and it, it blows out. Let's see if we can show you back. It's back and underneath, I hope this shows up, this is where his air comes out back under here. Nobody can really notice it. <laughs> Put his ear back on. That's his ear. Hey everybody, um, I did some work on my Robbie. You know my Robbie's a suit, and uh, normally I have to wear him, but I want to display him too, so I'm kind of making an a skeleton for the inside of him to make a display stand. Anyway, uh, here he is standing up. I got the beginnings of his display stand going. It's it's a couple of iron rods that go through a big piece of plywood. Now I bring the rods in behind his knees. You can see the crescents down there. Those Velcro in when I'm in the suit uh, to cover up the back of the knee hole. But when he's in this thing, I got to make custom ones with a slot or a hole in them or something for the for the rods, I haven't quite done that yet. Uh, I did an upgrade on his electronics too. I was using nickel metal hydride batteries to operate Robbie, but they were heavy and clumsy and uh, I've done a uh, uh, an electronic swap where I now have um, Ryobi lithium batteries in him. Let me show you that. All right, my wife's gonna video, I'll show you how Robbie. First of all, I put a switch on the front of him so I can, I can operate Robbie, you know, by himself. And uh, let me show you this. This is uh, normally inside my glove, but uh, I've got micro switches here for each hand. One of them operates his uh, front panel analyzer. And again, that would normally be in the glove and I could operate it from there. And the other one operates his uh, sax valves. His sax valves are going up there now. I should speed them up a little bit. All right. Go ahead and back up and I'm going to show you the battery upgrade. Here's uh, when he's in his stand, I, I, I can take out the front panel, it, it just pops out, or I can access him through his arm. So uh, his arm is on with bungee cords and it holds it in the socket and of course when my arm is in it, my arm holds it in the sockets, but <clears throat> let me flip them off here. Yep. Robbie's operating on one of these now. <laughs> I've re-OBI'd him. <laughs> Somebody could swap out batteries while I'm in the suit or I can even pull my arm out of the socket and, and do it myself if somebody would hand me a battery. And, uh, and I'm, I'm back in business with Robbie. Give it back up and let's see. Let's see him in his display stand here. I'll turn out the light too, you can see his lights. Okay, there's Robbie in the stand now. All right, one of the toughest parts of Robbie is making that big acrylic dome. Here's how I did it. This is a potter's wheel and I basically made a big plaster cone on the potter's wheel and I stretched a hot piece of plastic over it. And that's how I got Robbie's domes. This is called thermoforming. It's about the hardest part of the whole Robbie experience. And that's, that was my solution. Now my dome cracked. Uh, I think it just needed uh, fiberglass reinforcement, but I got three good pulls off of it. And uh, actually all three of my test domes would be perfectly fine for Robbie. So I used the best one and that's, that's how I made his dome.
Here we go. Okay, so this is uh, the oven. I'm trying to get this thing to about 325. I'm not quite making it. It's 315. Yep. So uh, we're gonna go with this. It's a mega hair dryer, for a blow dryer. It would like burn your scalp, right? All right. You're gonna back up by the door over there because I'm gonna put uh. this over the cone. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm backing up. Okay, so the plastic's already deformed a little bit. Woo! Look at that. I need to get it hotter. And I need two people to pull the cone, I think. Oh, it looks like it's pulling up on this side here. Oh, and my pinch wasn't good enough. Damn. It's okay. It's why we do these tests. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still filming. Want me to keep filming? Yeah, keep going. I'm cooling it. Yeah, I think this will be a two-person draw. You can get more pressure all the way around if you do that. Yeah. Also, I got a couple little defects in it. That are probably little bits of dust. It's shiny, looking shiny. Well, it's shiny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's reminding me of those legs pantyhose, like a ginormous one. Zip in here. Hey, it's nice to see you in there. <laughs> Still a little flexible. Yeah, I'm supposed to be able to draw this all the way down to the bottom of the cone. Oh, yeah, I wondered. Of course, my pinch is supposed to be good. Yeah, bummer. But this is going to tell us several things. One, mm -hmm. is my oven hot enough? I think I need to really go to 325 or 330. Uh, what was it at? Oh, 315. 315. 315. And uh, two, I think I need a strong person at each side of this thing mm -hmm. with oven mitts on because the, the ring itself is kind of warm. Wow. All right, now we'll see how tough it is to take it off the dome form. Okay. I'm still filming. It may have shrunk onto there a little bit. Oh. Oh, and see I've got a crack in my dome form. Oh, crud. But these things, we need to know these things. That's true. It's testing. We're testing, eh? All right. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now I was trying to see if I needed to paint the dome form mm -hmm. uh, or, or the in case the inside surface would uh, make my dome go milky. Yeah. And I may have to paint it. Uh, so because you want it clear. Oh, I want it crystal clear, yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen to that. Yeah. And I'll have to deal with cracking. Mm, crack is whack. 
Yeah. Yep. But I don't see surface detail for the inside. Mm. So uh, minor surface scratches are not mm -hmm. coming on to here. Dimples. Yeah, I think that's little bits of just flotsam mm. that got on there. I'm going to clean it and have another look, and of course I'll take, okay. it, out, take it out of my uh -oh, ring form. That's pretty cool here. to see. Back Whew. there is this makeshift uh, oven made of cardboard and uh and you can go look at the heaters in the bottom heaters, of okay all right Ouch. cardboard oven with some insulation around it because it would only get up to 200 before he added the insulation he got it up to 315. it's got some heaters down there as if texas wasn't hot enough all right Anything else you want me to film right now? Oh, he's gone. Well then, I guess that's it for now. Ta-da! Now when you start to make a Robbie robot, uh, there's no, not really no help for you online. There are no makers clubs, nothing like that. Apparently the guy who owns Robbie is real protective of him, so you won't find any details like that. But what you can do is get lots of production stills. And, careful measurement, you can figure out exactly what size Robbie has to be. This is how I did it. My Robbie's about 7 foot 2 tall, just like the original. Now nobody tells you how any of his stuff works, but you just got to figure that part out. You can steal my, uh, <laughs> my, you know... Whatever I figured out for it, but I don't know if it's, you know, the best way. It's just what I could do. Well, if you're going to make a Robbie the Robot, you've got a choice to make. You could make him the conventional way, uh, which I had uh, considered doing because I'd never done uh, computer CAD and I'd never done uh, 3D printing. The conventional way would be through vacuum forming and fiberglass layup and uh, machining. Well, that's, I'm familiar with all that stuff, but I want to learn some new things. So, uh, you've got to learn CAD, and you've got to learn 3D printing. So, you're going to spend a lot of time at the computer if you do it that way, but you get a really light robot. And uh, to tell you the truth, the fabrication is uh, uh, its slow, but it's safe. You're not using a lot of machine tools. Uh, you'll wind up doing some sanding and painting, but... Uh, there's nothing dangerous involved in it. Uh, so, there are files and files and files of various Robbie parts. You gotta work them all out. You gotta figure out, <laughs> you gotta figure out uh, your way of doing it. Nobody's gonna give you uh, how, how the Robbie people, you know, made anything. And uh, you're gonna do it different anyway if you're doing it, uh, you know, CAD and uh, 3D printing. Robbie was done the old-fashioned way. They would make wooden molds, they'd vacuum form parts over them. Uh, there was a bunch of fiberglassing involved and, uh, you know, uh, machining. So you're going to do it different if you do a 3D. Consumer 3D printers are really inexpensive now, and that, that made the decision for me. You know, the I bought a really big printer for Robbie, and it, it was less than $700. So... Uh, it really made the job a lot easier than hand, than hand fabricating all those molds. And then what would I do with all those Robbie molds and things? You know, that you'd just be trashing all that stuff. So this is really, uh, I think, the way to go right now. I uh, designed Robbie in Tinkercad. <clears throat> all his little transmissions, all his gears, all his widgets or whatever, uh, basically 3D printed. Except for those hands. You know, those hands are, you have to, I tried to 3D, uh, model the hands and print them up but uh, I that TPU uh, thermoplastic urethane or whatever that uh, is flexible uh, printing it's just not great stuff so all those hard parts to work that be 3d printed if I needed them strong I backed them up with fiberglass and if they were strong enough I just use them as is I'm gonna make a video of the gyro assembly in my Robbie including the transmission now uh, I put the transmission that's that's this lower part here on my video. So, the previous video I showed you the 
multi-spoke hub up here and the gear on each one of the gyros is a bearing in the hub here for that and then the flat gear uh, that is uh, affixed to the flat part of Robbie's head up there uh, that this is just a an extender and this is the globe here what I didn't show you was that there's this there's a rigid shaft that goes all the way up into the the uh, extender and that rigid shaft comes down through the uh, rotating hub and all the way through my transmission which is at the very bottom uh, here now uh, so all, all the top part is pretty pretty well gone over already uh, the shaft for uh, the hub the rotating hub is hollow and it allows a uh, that long shaft that go all the way up into the, this intermediate portion here uh, to come right down through the middle of everything. So that's a hollow shaft, and uh, let me let me see show you <clears throat> that to make this gyro assembly go, we just have to rotate this hollow shaft, and we have to keep the, the rigid shaft uh, stationary. I'll show you how my transmission does that. So. Uh, I'm I guess I'll blow up uh, the the rigidizer for the or the thing that keeps the stationary light and uh, so forth still is uh, this little bracket here and stationary shaft comes all the way through the transmission and it's held solid in this and a couple of wires come out and they, they're for the uh, light bulb in the top let me kind of tilt this a little bit here Okay, uh, the big gear that rotates uh, this hub assembly is right here, and the spur gear uh, that uh, rotates that, I've, I've actually got raised above the uh, transmission assembly, let me just uh, knock it back down into position, it would normally sit here. There we go. So I've got the uh, shaft of a gear motor uh, goes through here and drives this gear, which drives the big gear, which drives the rotating hub, which makes the planetary assemblies go around. In case you're looking for a design for a transmission, this was my solution to make the uh, gyros go around. And this is all in the top of Robbie's head, this little gear motor that is affixed to this uh, the case of this transmission right here. Hope that helps. This little video is going to be about uh, Robbie's rotating gyros up in the in the top of the head unit. Uh, this is an orthographic layout of uh, my gyro design. I've only shown one of the gyros, and it's not complete. It gets some other rings on it, but. Uh, this is the general shape of the thing. Let's uh, let's look at this from the front here. And uh, let me check out on from this part. So this is my uh, gyro design. Now the top is uh, and it's just a globe. It, these don't print clear, so um, I was actually trying to print it as a loose solid and then uh, saturate it with clear epoxy to see if I get a pretty clear globe and I had limited success with this it got a little more transparent but it honestly just uh, turns out into a white translucent globe anyway mine is uh, sized for the top of this and I've got a cavity here that'll fit a, uh, a large uh, blue LED so uh, I'll start to eliminate parts on this as as we kind of get through them, let's uh, let's get rid of the globe. Just hide that. I can make the rest of it a little bit bigger here. The next part. Uh, now, I've 3D printed this, but uh, this section of the uh, gyro assembly was probably turned aluminum, and you could machine this just as easily as uh, 3D printing it. But uh, for weight considerations, I've eliminated most of the metals from my particular Robbie suit because 
I have to wear it and I don't want it to be very heavy. Anyway, mine is uh, 3D printed and then I, uh, I leafed it to make it metallic. So I'll get rid of that. Uh, the gyros themselves are a pretty thin disc of uh, loops and I've got holes in it uh, where I put some other loops through and they're just uh, a single monofilament loop so we can get rid of that part. Now to the crux of the matter, let's get closer on this. This is the rotating hub assembly itself and it, on mine I have four hubs that go in there and I've only shown one because uh, it's all redundant. If you make a three three hole or a four hole um, it'll all be the same as far as the gearing and the uh, uh, layout of the thing. Now uh, I've got uh, this entire assembly rotates and uh, through the middle of it you'd have a quarter inch shaft in my case uh, that holds up the upper or the middle part and the upper globe and they they are stationary. So uh, that hole down through the middle is for that. Now on the outer bearing here we need a larger outer bearing surface for the entire assembly to rotate and I've got a little pad here that raises it off the deck uh, just about a half a millimeter. So the hub assembly is pretty straightforward. Uh, mine are at a 45 degree angle. You can choose the angle that you want here, but it'll uh, kind of determine the gearing that's inside. So let me get rid of the entire assembly and then we'll look at the gear train. Alright, so for mine I have a bevel gear and uh, there's a little shaft in here. I use brass. Actually, I think I use aluminum shafting and a little brass uh, bearing in mine. So this is the actual hub that holds the uh, gyro uh, globey thing and <laughs> it's shafted uh, onto this gear and I, I 3D printed these, I designed these for 3D printing and they worked out really well. Let's uh, let me go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight this gear, let's have a top look at it. It's a, it's a bevel gear. I'll get rid of the hub, the hub is pretty straightforward. And now you can see that I have this gear here, and of course there would be another one here, and here, and here. And uh, when I designed these gears, I made them as big as I could in here without touching the next gear. Um, it, obviously it's easier if you have a three hub design uh, to fit the gears in there, but I have a four hub design, so mine just clear the next gears, which would go here and here. And then this uh, bottom gear is kind of an interesting one. Let's change our look here. Oh, come on back. <laughs> there we go. The bottom gear is uh, a flat gear. Uh, the, the teeth are tapered so that it just meshes perfect with this other gear. And that gear uh, mounts directly to the top plane table of the Robbie head. So that's uh, that is the design I have for my uh, rotating gyros on my Robbie.